Uh, I'm going to show you the, uh, the first trick I ever worked on. You probably recognize it. I mean, it's anywhere in the world you see three cups turned over, mouth down. It kind of reads as magic. So a lot of people, uh -huh. in ancient Egypt, Greece, you know, uh, you need the three cups, and for this to be magic, you need a magic wand. Uh -huh. This is the one that I use. <laughs> and uh, you need a, from the kitchen, I got a, a tomato. In this case, this would be like the ball okay. that you use on the street to uh, right. cheat people. Now, for the purposes of the trick, I actually need more than one. So if you take the bowl of the spoon, make another one appear. Thanks. <laughs> no, 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 don't pay for that. No, 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 no. no, no, no. You need the third one, you just make it appear, but it appears there by itself, too. So. Uh, I'll do this as slowly as possible. If you see how it works, it's okay. You probably know something about it anyway. Old oh. freaking magic, you know. You take the first tomato, and uh, it's very simple. You wave the wand, and it goes away. I'll do it again based on your rousing response. Thank you. <laughs> it's all right. No, no, just one of you. I get it. Yeah, but I, I kind of, it, it helps to have you know, more people. <laughs> See, you're right. You're right. It was just, just it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. You feel like, you know, like the pharaoh. <laughs> you're right. You know, like, well, that's, <laughs> that's right. Well, that would be appropriate for this. We'll bring him back next year. Yeah, right. He amuses right. me slightly. Okay. <laughs> well, the next one is, the next, the next uh, tomato is uh, easier that you're, you know, something can happen, so I do something different to surprise you, hopefully. <laughs> I'm completely going the way. <laughs> Thanks. Um, thank you. You're learning your cues. That's good. Right. And the last one, I mean, some people think that tomato is not really gone. Maybe I put it somewhere else. And that's uh, understandable. It doesn't go up the sleeves, though. If you watch, come on. It goes away like that. And it reappears inside this little house. You know the story. You know. All right, thanks. Thank you. Well look. well, look, there's nothing inside the cup there, right? Nothing inside this cup here. Nothing inside this cup. Fair. Uh, what I'm going to do in a moment is have uh, your help, but just stay where you are. Okay. Uh, a tomato under every cup, and I want you just to pick number one, number two, or number three. Number three. Number three. I will take the tomato out of this cup invisibly, put it on top of the third one, the one you've picked. It will join that one. See? It's really, it really left. Yeah, that's something. I mean, a little more, more serious. A build on the premise. Yeah. Watch. It actually goes straight to the top invisibly. That's, <laughs> I'll do it again. One more time. Yeah, one more time. It goes through that. All right. So I'll do one more. I'll do one more trick, and I'll teach you basically the, the way it works. You put one here. You put one here. And you put one here. If you tap these two, these two uh, vanish and reappear there in the middle. Okay. So the way this works is this. Um, I'm cheating. There's three, there's too much for you to pay attention to. Really, there's three cups. Right. There's three tomatoes. There's a wand. Uh, I'm devilishly handsome. Mm, yeah, that's exactly thank you, thank you, Ben. Thank you. Uh, I don't need any help. You're fine. You're great. I love you. Pretending to be. I'll, 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 tell, I'll make it easier. I'll get rid of this one. Uh, never mind. I'm the same thing with this one. And that leaves just uh, this one on the table. Yeah. Now sometimes this one comes back, and that's confusing. <laughs> it's supposed to be in the back pocket. The way that works is this. This is. I think this is the first real magic trick in history. It's just pretending to take something in your hand. You know, uh -huh. just, you sit and just practice that in the mirror all through high school to get to the point that you can. Mean, it's supposed to look like you are taking it, you know. Right. But you can do it slowly. You just pretend to take it. It's not. It stays here in this hand. Right. So when I pretend to put it away, I slip this under the cup like it was there the whole time. Yeah. It just mm -hmm. kind of rolls under the cup. Does that make sense? So that's, that's, that's how the whole trick works. So if you put this away for real, it might be confusing if all three come back. So. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, only a little bit. So, I take all three. Uh, just pick one, two, or three where you'd like all three to reappear. It's up to you. Number one. Number one, for sure. You want to change your mind? It's up to you. No, no. It can't be there. That's where the big one is. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> well, the, the, the truth of the matter is, is that I, I, I did cheat. I put one under this cup and this cup, and actually a fourth one under here. So. <laughs> Four lemons. I don't want you to have those bins. Those are for you. Thanks. I'll make them an egg. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's good. That's good. That's cups of balls. That's very impressive. Thank you, sir. No. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, and then, yeah, so uh, cups, you know, the cups and balls, uh, uh -huh. that, that's the first uh, recorded trick. I mean, it's uh, the first book in the English language about magic, it's expo exposing how magic tricks work, the discovery of witchcraft is 1584, and huh. it images this trick, you know. And it's, every, it's weird how every culture has this uh -huh. image of three cups turned mouth down and yeah. some object, either for gambling, 
uh, over magic or something. And, uh, it's the, kind of the ancestor of the three card mafia you toss in right. the card and follow the A's and that kind of thing. What was it? It's, you're saying it's, it's in our DNA to recognize that? Yeah, I think it, no matter where you go in the world, if you put three cups face down in a bowl and uh -huh. maybe a stick, that, that just says magic to people. Right. It's very strange that I, no matter where I've gone and done that, people get. And it's, and it's a simple concept of like a ball and a cover. You know, it's your dad putting a coin in his hand like a chance of it. Right. It's something being covered and this. I don't know, but the first. Uh, Brought the first uh, kit. Uh, I was. This is the cups and balls. I was a. Uh, like I was a kid, and you have a. Uh, you know these weird cups that no human being has ever seen. You they're, know, pretty, right. they're, they're very pretty, but they're, they're pretty they, and, they, and they're made to stack in a way. They're made to hold. Mm -hmm. You know, a ball on top. So they have their recessed. You know, like that. So it, right. that, will, that will stay there. And and they have these weird balls, these little baseballs. You know, so it's always. And you have this. You have this problem that. You know. Uh, Again, nobody has that in their home unless it's, it's for no no good purpose other than to... Right. Unless yeah. you plan to pursue a life of celibacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it will magically keep you single if you have that uh, on your shelf. But it's always there's no... It just, it's such a polite kind of, you know, defenestrated art form. <laughs> there's not like a G.G. Allen of magic or like, a, or like uh -huh. a, uh, and, and Andy Kaufman is someone who really would... Yeah. Had that many levels of, of, uh, of you know levels, levels of irony, yeah. Yeah. levels of removed. Right. Well, well, when I when I saw uh, Ricky Jay last weekend, there was somebody you know I, I saw his uh, talk and somebody in the audience asked him what's the difference between a uh, con man and a magician, and he said well the difference is that uh, you know a con man is trying to get is trying to fleece you, I mean, yeah. he's trying to get something yeah. out of you, whereas a magician is putting on a show. And he says you know a magician in a way is like the most honest person in the world yeah. because he says he's going to trick you and then he does. Right. Uh, <laughs> Ricky's correct in the sense that um, this, in terms of the skill set between magicians and con men, there's a huge overlap in the skill set in terms of right. manipulating the way people think uh -huh. and taking what we know about the way people behave and kind of using that against them. Mm -hmm. Right. But in terms of the uh, the frame, mm -hmm. you know, the, the scenario in which it takes place, that's the way it could not be more different. Really. Right. And yeah, because if you come to if you go to see a magician in the theatre and he starts doing three card monte. Uh -huh. You know you're not really going to lose any money. <laughs> right. Chances are, which uh -huh. is why those few magicians who actually make you bet money and keep the money, it's now right. Now it's a con game. Yeah. 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 Well, no, but still within the frame. It's just it's, right. It, there's yeah. another, another element to that now. But if you walk up to a guy on the street corner, uh -huh. you actually think you're going to win. I, I never, never, never understood that. <laughs> why people actually think they're going to beat the Monty game? Well, the guy does it for a living. Yeah. Right. It's like, you're not going to beat that. So, this is, this, this is his first time doing it, too. No. <laughs> yeah. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not even, an even playing field. Mm, right. Yeah. Yeah. My grandfather said, like, he, he always, he doesn't, he never gambles. Like, never play another man's game. Yeah. yeah it's really right. great. I think it's a great life lesson for anything. But man, and magic yeah. gives us, I think, it gives us lessons that if I can be fooled here in this kitchen, in this living room or dining room, Mm -hmm. In a theater or same space, I can be fooled, and what else can fool me? Right. Well, how else am I being deceived? Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, there's, there's this uh, uh, Borges essay that I love called uh, uh, Magic and uh, the Narrative Art, where mm -hmm. he says that the, the same psychology in that uh, that makes people you know, believe in magic or superstition is the uh, the sort of thing in you know the human brain that governs the laws of narrative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it says uh, you know because, because there aren't any stories in <laughs> reality because reality is just chaos. It's right. nonsense. It's yeah. not right. you know the things. You know, <laughs> but but telling a story is kind of like. Uh, uh, trying to link causes and effects that don't exactly. actually make sense. That's right. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite examples of that is that uh, there's this thing way back in the olden days, you know, where they they didn't they didn't understand the how. Old. Yeah, they, they did the, the, There was a long time before, you know, where they understood how la latitude works, which is easy because the lines don't touch. Mm -hmm. But they didn't understand longitude, mm -hmm. and they just didn't understand the full implications of like what it means that the world is round, you know, and yeah. that the sun revolves around they, they you know, the, or the, or the earth revolves around the sun. You know, they thought that it was the same time everywhere, yeah. and there was this big problem with telling time at sea, right. and uh, you know, especially in the daytime when there are no visual landmarks and no stars, yeah. and and, uh, and so they would have this thing called powder of sympathy, where you get an alchemist. Powder, to, of, sympathy. powder of sympathy. Powder of sympathy. Yeah, yeah, 
you get an alchemist to make this magic powder, and you sprinkle the powder on a sword, and you take the sword and you wound a dog with it, mm. and, then, and then, you, then you stitch up the dog, take the dog with you on the ship, and every day at the stroke of noon, the alchemist back in Europe is supposed to throw the sword in the fire, and at the, that moment, the dog on board the ship is supposed to start yelping and howling in sympathetic pain, and that's how you know it's noon. Right. <laughs> so you set your watch to it. It's, it's a long distance. Why, time of right. Why are we still reading their books? <laughs> <laughs> that seems really sacrilegious that what I just said. But it, it is sacrilegious. But no, I, uh, Good idea for a plot, though. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. No, man. I love that. I do actually.